All right, so with the increasing popularity of IEMs in the gaming market, there's been also a demand for like proper boom microphones for them. So there's like the Ethos Mark III Pro gaming cable, which was like, okay, it wasn't very like great, but it was all we had at the time. And eventually it was dethroned quite heavily by um, the Canera microphone. This is the Canera Grammar, which I reviewed, which is a really good microphone. And it was only a matter of time before like some big companies take notice and uh, just the company that makes microphones like specifically for like turning things into headsets came out of the woodwork and was like hey we did it too antlion the creator of the mod mic has made boom mics for iams but not only have they done that they've also created their own sets of iams for you to use this is the chimera solo and the chimera duo let's talk about it <laughs> All right, now let's get some things out of the way first. These were sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear here is my own personal opinion. Also, um, this is especially, you know, this this is a gaming kind of review channel. I'll be focusing more on that versus audiophile sound, but I'll still touch on audiophile sound because that is important to, you know, how it affects its gaming performance. Another thing is you may notice the duo and the solo look very similar. Well, this is the limited edition accidental print box. Um, these are actually supposed to be blue and they are blue on the inside. It's just, you know, they done goofed on the duo box. So. Don't worry about that. But so if you know you're in the first groups or buying the duo, your box is gonna look a little funny. But I promise you, it is the proper duo that's gonna be in there. It's just a misprint. Uh, yeah. That that being said, um, let's get started. Actually, before we get started, I should note that whether you buy the solo or the duo, you will still get the same microphone cable. That is, you know, the Kimura cable by Antline. And um, if you don't want to buy the solo or the duo, you still can buy like the microphone cable by itself. And you can get it in either a two pin or MMCX connector. If you're gonna get it with either of these. It's gonna be an MM6 connector. Just, just so you know, in case like you're thinking that you have to get the IEMs to get the cable. No, you can get the cable by itself. That being said, this review is gonna be looking at both of them as a whole package, as well as comparing them against each other. And then I'll also make a separate video focusing more on the microphone and also comparing them to the two other microphones I've already reviewed. So that being said, now let's get started. All right, now starting with the boxes, as you can tell, the Kimura Solo and Duo are exactly the same right now because the Duo has a slight misprint in the color, which will be fixed further down the line, like I mentioned before. But regardless, the content on the inside are basically exactly the same other than the IEMs, which will come pre-connected to the cable in the box. You'll also get several sets of different silicone tips as well as some foam tips. You also get a combo jack adapter, a carrying case to hold everything, as well as some paperwork in case you don't know what you're doing. Ow! Starting with the cable, we'll get a pretty simple rubber cable that's fairly long at 2 meters, as it is designed to be used across systems. It thus uses dual 3.5 millimeter jacks for headphone and mic audio, which can be plugged into the Y adapter in case you use a single jack for both, like on laptops and console controllers. Moving up to the split, it's a pretty simple design but it is durable with little supports for like where the cable bends and there is a chin slider in case you use those there's also a short clip in case you're into those for more stability and to move around a little bit better with it but it is removable in case you aren't going to be using it but i think it'll be very nice to have especially if you're a streamer now at the end you do get ear hooks that end in mm6 connectors but there is a two pin standalone cable in case you're into that regardless the ear hooks on these aren't exactly pre-curled as they can be adjusted so you can move it around and have it perfectly adjusted to your ear and this may have also been done to give some stability and form so that the mic can sit up a little bit better, which as you can see here sits on the right cable and is not removable. And like the adjustable hooks, the mic itself is also very adjustable so you can move it to the perfect spot on your face to get the perfect sound. Now as for the mic at the end itself, it's supposedly a very high quality omnidirectional microphone. And from the previews I've heard of it, it sounds pretty good, but let's put it to the test right about now. All right now we're currently listening to like the Kimura microphone, which is this little baby right here, as you can hear me tapping it. And uh, this is how it's going to sound. It is an omnidirectional microphone, and as expected, when it comes to omnidirectional microphones, they tend to sound a lot better compared to, say, like cardioid microphones, at least if it's a boom mic, which you'll see in like gaming headsets and whatnot. Oftentimes, if you have like a cardioid microphone on a gaming headset, usually the quality isn't quite as good because it is doing some work trying to cancel out background noises. And since it's such a small unit, it has like some difficulty doing so. By using a omnidirectional microphone, they don't have to do as much work, so you can get like just better crisper audio, as you can kind of hear now. However, this also means it can capture like background noises like around it. For example, I got like this cafe background sound, whatever, and um, this is kind of what a loud kind of ish kind of cafe would sound, and it definitely is picking up the noise in the background because it is like you know once again it's an omnidirectional microphone. Now if I just you know face here where my speakers are blaring out from. You can definitely hear the backgrounds, but on the bright side, 
it captures my voice so much more clearly than it does the background. So that is a good thing. Some cases with omnidirectional microphones, you have trouble with that, in which case everything is loud and it's hard to hear the person's voice over the entire background. So considering that it is an omnidirectional microphone, this is actually doing a really good job. Now as for the design and the build of the Kimura Solo and Duo, they've done a really good job with the solid resin build that's very similar to much more expensive IEMs like the Moondrop Blessings 2, with a preformed, almost custom-like shape on the inner side that's transparent so you can see the very drivers within that it's going to be using. A big difference, of course, is the MMCX connectors on top, and the fact that the nozzle is made of metal rather than being part of the resin body. And there is, of course, the grill to keep your nasties out of it. Alright, now then, the sound of the Solo versus the Duo. So, their sound is fairly similar, but distinct different as they are using very similar parts. The Solo is only using a single driver, a dynamic driver, whereas the Duo uses that same driver but also adds a balanced armature driver, which does change the sound to the point where I would actually much prefer the Duo over the Solo personally, but we'll get to that, you know, into that like later, or I guess right now, because we're talking about the sound now. So then, uh, with that being said, both of them have pretty warm-ish sound signatures, one warmer than the other, which is the Solo, which I guess we'll start on that one. So, the Solo itself has a more traditional warm kind of v-shaped sound signature not too crazy v-shaped but enough where you'll definitely notice that there is like that boost in the highs the lows and a slight recession in the mids now according to the antline website they seem to be pretty proud of the low end like the base of like both these iems and they should be the low end on the solo as well as the duo is really good on the solo specifically it has a really good deep reach in those lower sub bass regions it really pulls up that thumpy growly it's just very rumbly and the punch itself is still pretty decently punchy and both of them are not overly bearing so they are still a pretty clean bass and I do like the bass response in this. Now the bass in the solos in particular are fairly strong in the sound and that does cause a bit of a recession in the mid section particularly in like the lower mids and the mid mids. At the upper mids and up it starts to like get back more of that forward push for that V-ish kind of sound like I said and you know overall with those mids I still think it's like okay for the price we're paying and what we're getting as an overall package. The mids themselves are, they're decently detailed, but they aren't like the cleanest mids I've ever heard in the world. And this definitely has to do with the fact that it's using a single driver trying to push out all this sound. And it's doing such a great job in like the low range that sometimes it just misses a little bit in like the cleanliness and the details of the mid range itself. But even then, it's like an okay mid range. It's nothing to like, you know, write home about. The mids, as it starts to go into the upper mids and the highs, you start getting more of that forwardness, that presence, and the details so then like voices and like little of the upper ranges like female voices and like male voices of the upper ranges sound really really forward but they aren't as clean or as smooth as I personally prefer that's just kind of me there's a bit of like texture to it which some of you may or may not like but for me it just kind of comes off like not the cleanest sound in the world but you know I'm of course like comparing that cleanliness to things that are like significantly more expensive so I guess that's kind of unfair so if I were to compare it to something similar in range of sound, I guess, then I'd say it's about right, especially considering that it is using a single driver. But still, I would have preferred like a slightly smoother presence to like that range, I guess. And this also extends into the highs, which also get pretty high up there. And it also has the same thing with like the mid, the upper mids, where it's got some texture to it and a little bit of micro detailing, but it doesn't quite come off as very clean. It just kind of, I don't know, the, it just you could feel the texture of the sound if that makes sense and sometimes it comes off a little bit harsh um, especially in the higher ranges when it gets like really really high up there I wouldn't say it gets sibilant necessarily it just kind of gets shouty I guess at times but more harsh than anything else and this isn't like all the time but sometimes when it gets really up there but overall as the sound package is and the price and what we're getting I still think it does a pretty good job now if we go to the duo the duo essentially fixes a lot of those issues that have with the solo by adding that balance armature driver and what adding that driver does is it essentially takes a lot of strain away from like the just single driver doing all the work and cleans up the sound overall giving some more controls of the sound while also like changing like the sound signature overall to be slightly more balanced in terms of its presentation now don't get me wrong I do think the sound is still on the warm ish side but not quite as warm as on the solos the solos had a very strong bass region which was very in your face with the more kind of v-shaped signature whereas on the duo 
shells, because of how the way it's now tuned to be slightly more balanced, the base is not quite as forward. It's still fairly strong though. It definitely has a lot of feel to it. It still has that same really good deep sub base region reach, that same good old rumble, and it still has a pretty decent punch to it. It's just not quite as forward, and I do prefer it that way because of how it works with the rest of the sound. Now, because of the way things are now built and tuned, the mids aren't quite as recessed as on the solo. They're actually still like very much there, especially in the lower mids. But I do think there is still a slight recession, but not nearly as much as on the solo. So there's a more balanced kind of tone to it. And with that, the presentation of the mids is also much cleaner. It's a little bit smoother and it still has a really good amount of detail. Now, this also, you know, goes into like the upper mids as well as the highs. Overall, it's much cleaner, a little bit smoother sounding, and it just sounds overall much better. And because of this, the detail retrieval, I think, is also just much better on the duo versus on the solos. The sound is just overall been cleaned up by adding that one single balanced armature driver and just tuning it in a way that just makes it sound really good. Now, while I am saying that, you know, the word balanced a lot, I'm not saying these are like neutral sounding by any means. They, like, once again, are a bit on the warmer side and are still on the musical end. They're very enjoyable sounding. I just think they are like a far more controlled, more um, cleaner version of the solos. And, you know, if you ask me, the extra money you'd be paying for the duos is definitely worth it, unless you're very much into like that V-shaped sound signature, you know? Now, when it comes to the sound stage and imaging of both of them, they are a little bit more similar than they are with, you know, their sound signature, but there are still some distinctions to be made. With the solos, the sound stage is slightly larger than average and still has that ovular kind of sound. It's got a decent amount of width. The depth is just okay. So, you know, once again, it's got that oval sound and, and the room height is just okay. Once again, it's just like above average, not the craziest large sound stage, but I guess for an IM, it still like feels fairly large and it's like more than adequate and I do like that. But um, when you go into like the imaging is just okay and this has a lot to do with how the sound is tuned. So the imaging, I would say, is it's about average. It's not the most accurate thing in the world, but the presentation of things is just enough to figure out where things are, generally speaking. Sound separation is just okay. Sometimes when there's a lot of sounds going on, it's a little bit jumbled up, but you still are able to find the sounds because they're separated enough where you can still, like, you know, home in on the sounds. But not quite as well as on, say, the duo. The duo, let's start, in, you know, let's start with the sound stage. Uh, the duo has a slightly larger sound stage, and I think it is slightly rounder than on the solo. So overall, I think the duos, when it comes to the size of the stage, it is also above average, but you know, once again, larger than solos. They are slightly rounder, so it's got good, pretty good with fairly okay depth, and the height of it, it's about the same as the solos, to be honest. But when it comes to the imaging, I think it is much more precise than the, the solos. And the things you hear, especially in game, are where they should be more often than not than on the solos, if that makes sense because with the solos while they're more generally accurate when it comes to precision the uh, duos are more pinpoint than um, the solos. Not like super mega pinpoint, but still fairly accurate. I don't, you know, I, things were where they should be when I was listening to where the sound was. And I do think this also has to do with like, you know, the extra balanced armature driver in there and how it handles like sound separation because of all these factors. The sound separation on the duo is much better than on like the solos and like for most people that may be a little bit, but it's like if you listen carefully, it is quite a lot of bits. In a jumble mess of sounds going on it is far easier to like home in on a sound you're looking for on the duo than on the solos so you know with that being said i do think this balanced armature driver working with like the dynamic driver really does help with its precision its ability to separate sound and just overall perform um just well for sound in, in, in game, honestly. And speaking of games, let's just finally get into that. So as expected, whether you're using the solo or the duo, they do, will do very well in non-competitive games, more open world kind of games, story-driven games, games where you want to immerse yourself in the environment. However, I think the duos overall do it much better by giving you more of that realistic sound versus how they are presented with the solos. I mean, don't get me wrong, I do like how they sound with the solos because the depth and sound and fullness of the body of the sound for both of them is very good when it comes to like the solos they do an amazing job giving you that presence and body and sound just because of how the bass is tuned and you just feel a lot of what 
is going on in the world because you are you get your ears a little bit tickled by those upper sounds dudes that a v-shaped sound signature going on here which not gonna lie due to the tuning of things was a little bit much for my ears if there was a lot of those sounds going on in the upper ranges it was just a little, little too intense at times for too long you know so it definitely can get a little bit fatiguing and while it's not the most clean sound due to the forwardness of it of you know the sound it really pulls you in though i think if you go with the duo it will ease you into the world a little bit better and you get more even sound giving you a more realistic presentation of that world so the immersion just feels a little bit better on the duos than on the solos it's just less intense i guess and more hmm i guess maybe it sounds more real that's it's hard hard to describe more natural i suppose it's like they both do the same job where they immerse you they just do it very differently and the solos definitely will come off as more intense so i guess if you want that more intense presentation then I, the solos would do better in those kind of games whereas if you want a more natural realistic presentation and immersion then you know the duos would do better but either way the, you know they do a pretty good job for those ones all right now let's move on to competitive games which i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have been waiting to hear about so when it comes to competitive games i think the duos just overall will do you better for those kind of games versus the solos. The sound signature of the solos is just very V-shaped, so while it is very fun and very engaging and you still will have a pretty good time in shooter games, tracking people can be a little bit troublesome sometimes when there's a lot of sounds going on due to how the sound is presented. If there's a lot of explosions or a lot of bass notes going on, it's going to definitely cover up the sounds of like footsteps and whatnot that you're, be, you know, that you're trying to track for. Those sounds will be a little bit hard to find. And even then, when those sounds aren't happening, the precision of the solo is just generally accurate. It is okay. You'll generally know where people are, so you know, you'll still find people, but you won't find them quite as easily as with like the duos. With the duos, due to the way the sound is presented, uh, it's, yeah, you still will have trouble when there's a lot of sound going on at the same time, a lot of explosions, and those sounds will like cover up footsteps and whatnot, just honestly on any sets, but it won't do it quite as much as on like the solos. With the duos, it's far easier to still track sound because it's more balanced in sound signature, so you're able to hear everything a little bit more acutely but you know even then i don't think these are 100 percent made for competitive shooter games those kind of iems typically lack base just so you can find things a bit easier these things are if you still want to play more competitively but at the same time you're not like a super try hard sweat and you still want to enjoy the game and winning isn't everything because if winning is everything you'd be using a set where it's pretty boring in sound but just good for listening for feet you know what i mean so when it comes to the duos for gaming competitive gaming specifically i still think they do a pretty great job the precision of the sound is good, so you can you know you can definitely find people really easily with them. It's not a hundred percent pinpoint, but it's still pretty damn close to it. So finding people, tracking people to like hunt them or even just hide from them is pretty good on the duos. Definitely better than on the solos due to like how it presents the sound and how the sound separation is handled with the duos. Still, even then, I do think the sound of the duos is designed to be like an overall sound where you'll be using them for not only competitive games but also non-competitive games. But I do think with the way the sound is tuned it is leaning a little bit more towards non-competitive games but with the way that it's tuned still i i do think it still does a really good job in like more competitive games just because of how the sound is not too overwhelming in the places where it shouldn't be it's very much well tuned so that you can play any games and be very happy with it it's not super specialized it's very generalized and it's not a bad thing it's still it's good it's like a good all-around set that you can have a really good time no matter what game you play while still having a very enjoyable sound now if you're going for pure enjoyment and you know non-competitiveness then i would say the solos will do a good job but yeah you can still play competitive games with them but they won't be as good as on the duos and um, these are definitely just for like just for fun you know if you're playing non-competitively you're playing competitively but you're not playing comp then i think you're gonna be fine if you're playing very very competitive you're a try hard sweat i'd go for i'd go for something else i mean i guess i'd say the same for the duos but like um if i was forced between the two i wouldn't use the solos for really super try hard ranked modes as much as i would use the duos an interesting note i should make about the solos is i did notice with how like you know the highs and the upper mids are tuned on the solos you do kind of hear the sounds of feet a little bit early if like there's no other sounds coming on you know like if like there's not too much other sounds going on so i do think think with that section sometimes the solos actually do better at warning you that someone's there the reason i say the duos are better is because they're just more precise for telling you where they are these will kind of warn you a little bit better in that case but then you know if an explosion goes then there, there goes that ability kind of kind of a weird situation because the harshness um of the upper mids and highs on the solos actually come in clutch sometimes in shooter games to just kind of warn you ahead of time that someone is nearby but then when it comes to precision the duos just do a better job in telling you where that is with 
with the duels, you definitely have to listen a little bit harder, more actively, but you're doing that anyway if you're going to be playing these games more sweatily, you know? At the end of the day, if you're like a super mega try hard sweat and you just want to like win and that's how you have fun, um, I, I would just pick something else because at that point you're super specialized and all you want to do is win, in which case I would just get a tin T2, the standard tin T2, and stick it on this. Look at that. It fits. MMCX connectors. <laughs> but yeah, at that point you would just get the tin T2, throw on this cable separately, which I'll have, you know, once again, I have a review separate on just focusing on the microphone compared to other microphones. And that's what I would run with if I'm just a pure tryhard sweat and that winning is all that matters. But if you're a person who likes to enjoy the actual sound, to enjoy the game, and, you know, winning isn't everything, then either of the sleeves will do you just fine. Solo, duo, they'll do great for both games. I just, you know, like I mentioned, duos will do better for um, competitive than solos. And I personally still prefer the sound of the duos much more than the solos. But if you like a V-shape, then, you know, here's the solos for you. It's pretty much all I have for today. So if you do want to buy either of these guys or even just the microphone cable itself, I'll have a link in the description. And uh, I, I think it's an affiliate. I'm not sure if it's an affiliate. I'll have to double check on that later. But I'll also leave a link to like, you know, the the, the microphone comparison, like for uh, the, the this this microphone compared to the other microphones, in case you just want to buy the cable with the mic and use it with your pre-existing IEM choice. So, you know, um, I guess I'll leave a little thing right in the corner right there in case you want to link it to there and make it easier for you. So, uh, yeah, this is this has been a really long video, but I feel like it's deservedly long. It's got all that info on the sound of these guys, and I think it's important. This is a really great development in the IEM gaming space. I think these are an amazing package. No matter which one you get, it just comes down to your preference of sound. So, that being said, I'll see you guys next time.